All right, so this is just going to go over like latency again, but like everything I've said before, there's some stuff that I'm probably just going to delete it because it shouldn't be there, but a lot of stuff's been tested recently by Freethe, which is like really good stuff. He's gone through and tested all these different things that people like all these different tweaks and stuff. And at the end of the day, I have a list here. It's just but the best thing you can do if you want to decrease latency is get better hardware and overclock your CPU, disable C states, overclock your GPU, put your RAM in XMP mode or individually do your RAM timings. That's This is really good, honestly. If you can learn to individually do your RAM timings, highly recommend. Get better peripherals, mice, keyboard, and don't fall into the placebo effect, which is pretty much... I fell into the placebo effect. I did, 100%. I went through and blindly followed all these YouTubers and applied all these registry edits that were just so useless and they didn't actually do anything. They probably hurt my system more than it actually made my system better. And following all these like people here, I'm just like, this guy here. Like this guy doesn't know half the crap he's talking about, honestly. I like I was blindly following this guy and then I I realized like, what are these registry edits actually doing? They're just saying, oh, they decrease input delay. You watch this video, it's like, you want to decrease input delay? Do this. But there's no, like, testing behind it. It's like, and then I go through and I deep dive and find actually where these people recently, I, I deep out, I deep dove and actually went and tried to find where these people got these from. And, like, this person here, Melody here, a lot of people follow this person too. And you just go through and you just find all this crap that, like, apply this, apply that, do this, do that. But we have no idea what these things actually do. Like this here, there's this is for mouse data buffer size, like mouse data queue size to reduce the mouse buffers. This like on the newest Windows builds, these aren't gonna this isn't gonna do anything. Your mouse is already like Microsoft has built Windows so that it, the mouse isn't like it everything is going to run the way it's supposed to run. Do you think the pros like pro players are going and doing mouse data queue sizes? No, they're not because it doesn't do anything. Maybe on like Windows 2000 or Windows XP this might help, but on the newest builds of Windows, this is going to hurt your system more than actually make it better. There's no point in doing half these like registry edits without actually having any proof of anything like any proof, any graphs, numbers. I literally went into these people's discords and I'm like, oh, hey, like, do you have any proof for any of these graphs? And they said, they, they go, oh, no, we're not going to spend thousands of dollars. We can feel the difference when we type these in or do, feel the difference when we do these registry edits. That doesn't, like, you can't say that you feel the difference. You're just falling into the placebo effect. That's all you're doing. All the people that apply these and go, oh, yeah, I can feel it. No, you're falling under the placebo effect. These aren't going to actually do anything without actual proof behind it. If you can find proof, I'll eat my words 100%. But I've gone into these people's discords. I've gone into these places. And I'm like, oh, hey, like, what do these registry edits actually do? Like, do you have proof that they do anything? There's no answers. There's literally no proof at all that these actually do anything. They most likely hurt your system more than they actually can better your system. And I've asked people, actual smart YouTubers, like Battle Nonsense, for say. I, I talk to this guy all the time. And I asked him all these questions, and he's 100%. He's like, these, your fault, these, are, these fall under the placebo effect. They don't actually do anything. Windows is built for, like, Windows is there, and it's a great system. It's not, That's not great, but there's a lot of things that can be stripped from Windows that can help, like, decrease latency. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the tiniest, tiniest bit. If you want the lowest latency, yeah, strip down Windows. It's going to give you maybe one, two milliseconds of input like less input delay, but uh, I go through Freethe's chart here. He went and tested a ton of stuff. You can just start at like 13.92 milliseconds of input delay for Valorant, let's say. And maybe the lowest you can get it to the end is gonna be 9.98 by the time you're done. Honestly, like we're turning off hyper-threading, turning off SMT, just making sure you're using physical states is probably a great thing you can do and that's probably a large that's probably a big drop in latency but yeah basic tweaks and literally when it goes to basic tweaks it's just overclocking your cpu overclocking your gpu disabling c states and putting on a good power plan that's literally it like you look through these things that he did when i highlight over here 
and you can see this is what he did and that's going to create the biggest drop in latency everything else is going to be next to nothing in input latency so <laughs> don't go and blindly do all these things and buy all these registry tweets they're not going to do anything honestly they're not they're, they're, most of these things fall to the placebo effect a better mice keyboard is going to help obviously with input delay Vsync, Vsync, I'm going to cover that quick before I cover DPI and Hertz. Um, Gsync, Vsync, honestly, I can tell you right now, running Gsync, Vsync, he said right here it has Gsync, Vsync, ULL, ULLM, which is ultra low latency mode in the NVIDIA control panel, 11.36. He didn't test it with NVIDIA Reflex. He tested it with the NVIDIA control panel ultra low latency mode which is actually worse than reflex. So here he got 11.36 milliseconds of input delay with G-Sync off uncapped 10.76. It's not, the difference is next to nothing. Again, this is running on 360 Hertz, a 360 Hertz monitor. If he put on NVIDIA reflex, these numbers are gonna be even lower and it's gonna be the same as running uncapped frames. It's better to just run G-Sync V-Sync with um, reflex enabled. I, I'm telling you right now, I have played Valorant with G-Sync off uncapped, and it is a terrible experience on when you're running like 700 frames, let's say. I, I can get I can push 700 frames in game, and the FPS drops are just stupid sometimes. I'll drop from 700 frames down to like 250 sometimes in the game, just when shit's happening or getting into gunfights. And it causes stutters, latency, Just it just causes a ton of fucking shit that just doesn't... That just shouldn't be happening. And then even if I cap at 500, still, it's just not good. And you're supposed to cap double your refresh rate or like at like a integer that's actual like that you can multiply by. So let's say like I have 360 hertz, cap at 720. I'm not capping at 720, like still the frame drops are still going to happen all the time. Best thing, I'm going to tell you right now, I play with G-Sync off uncapped for like a month. And I played with G-Sync V-Sync with Reflex. And I performed so much better with G-Sync V-Sync NVIDIA Reflex on. And it's just because the game runs so much smoother. And the input delay is very consistent. And just people just have so much bad shit to say about G-Sync. But they have no fucking idea what G-Sync is or what it does. You got to learn what G-Sync is. You can just go look. What does What is G-Sync? And in like... We can go, this is just for Valorant. We can go to CSGO per se, right? CSGO doesn't have reflex built in. It has ultra low latency mode, the, like the ULLM, but the ULLM is actually terrible for CSGO. You should not enable it. That ultra low latency mode for CS, that ultra and low, whatever it is, don't enable that. It's gonna increase latency. Best thing to do, if you look right here, G-Sync, where is it? It's over here. Here. FPS cap 357. Where is it? Here. For the numbers. I'll find. G-Sync off cap at G-Sync off cap at 357 frames. 12.5 milliseconds. Oh my god, I'm looking at the wrong numbers. Sorry. G-Sync off cap 357. 10.7 10.76 milliseconds of interplay. Uh, 10 10 10.76 milliseconds of input delay. I cannot talk. G-Sync off uncapped, so letting your frames run uncapped. 10.87. There's actually more input delay letting your frames run uncapped. It's When you're at 360 hertz, it's actually better to cap your frames. I'm going to go all the way over here to this. If I'm going to run G-Sync plus V-Sync, cap my frames at 357, I'm going to get literally the same input delay and I'm going to run within G-Sync range, which is going to make the, gun, the game run so much smoother. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play CSGO with G-Sync and V-Sync and I'm going to cap my frames in-game at 357. When I'm playing Valorant, I'm going to run G-Sync, V-Sync and I'm going to use Reflex enabled in-game. I'm never going to touch ULLM in-game. Most of the time, it is going to increase latency. There's no point in doing it. Leave that setting off. It's terrible. Use reflex if the game allows it, and if it doesn't allow it, cap your frames at the G-Sync range. You can read the articles on 
Blurbusters. You can literally just go to Blurbusters and just read their G-Sync articles. Just go ahead and like I've linked them before. It's great knowledge. It's great stuff. Just go ahead and read them. The Nvidia article covers literally everything I just said for polling rates. Again, if you're running the new Razer 8K, you should be above 240 hertz, or else it's not going to really do anything. You're not going to realize. You're not going to see a difference. Just they literally say. Run this. If you don't have this, run this. But that's not exactly true. Don't put this on. This is terrible. This is... Don't ever use this. Um, Going down. Turn off exclusive full screen. Possible always be in exclusive full screen. A lot of people took this by like, oh, disable full screen optimizations. No, this means that you should just be in full screen mode. Disabling full screen optimizations for games, honestly... On the newest Windows build, it's going to actually, it's going to be the same, if not lower latency in most games, if you just don't disable full screen optimizations. Val doesn't really matter. You might see the, the slight, 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 slightest that you're never, ever going to realize of input delay. But just, you don't have to disable full screen optimizations. On old Windows builds, yes. On the new Windows builds, no. Next. Just going through this article is great. Like it just says, overclock your CPU, overclock your GPU, turn game mode on. Honestly, turn hardware accelerated GPU scheduling off. Hags. Depends on the game, honestly. Turning hags on. CSGO makes is pretty good low late like reduces latency. In a lot of games it does. Valid increases latency. If you use OBS, don't use hags. Um yeah, consider faster hardware. It's just, it's just, you can read through this article. Great article, but for monitors, using overdrive depends. I use just the lowest setting of overdrive on the new 360 hertz monitors. I have the Alienware one right now that I'm using, and it has fast, super fast, and extreme. I just use fast. You can just go and look up the monitor, and you can see there's tons of people that do just testing, and you can see the overshoot. I just run the lowest setting of overdrive. You want some overdrive, but you don't want to go too crazy or else you're going to see like reverse ghosting. Um, yeah, last thing to cover would be DPI, Hertz and Mouse. Watch Battle Nonsense's latest video here. You can see that actually running a higher DPI does change end-to-end -end system latency which is crazy no one like a lot of people i've read some articles about people actually talking about that but i never really believed half of it i didn't really see any proof behind it but this is actual proof he went through and did a bunch of testing and you can actually see that when you're running a polling rate of 8000 hertz at 400 dpi compared to running a polling rate of 8000 hertz at 1600 dpi the end-to-end -end system latency there's a massive difference and latency so you should be running 1600 dpi if you're using a razor 8k even when you're running a thousand polling rate which most of you are on just like your regular mouse yeah sorry yeah thousand hertz it, going from 400 dpi to 1600 dpi actually reduces system end-to-end -end latency like honestly this is great information like very like very thankful for battle nonsense in doing this photon delay video and it's crazy to think that this would actually, like actually using a higher DPI would create lower system, like lower latency. So you should be playing on 1600 DPI in game and just converting your sense. If I play on 400, I'm just gonna use a Valorant sense converter, Valorant sense converter. And I'm gonna convert my sense from 400 DPI to what I play on 0.357 to 1600 dpi and now this is going to be my new sense here that's if you want to go go watch this video it's a great video and it just shows you that actual that dpi actually matters for latency that's it honestly go through this go through this too and just you can go through the chart one by one this is how you read it from left to right starts here gson gone and then it just shows the tweaks that were applied. If it lowers latency, he, he keeps the tweaks. And if it doesn't, so let's say I'm here on input delay and now I'm here. If I disable idle saver, 
So my CPU is going to show it's running 100% in task manager. It's actually going to increase latency. So no, I'm not going to leave my uh, CPU on like uh, like uh, fuck, off idle. I'm going to actually idle it. It's because it's going to increase latency. There's a lot of things about that. Even Calypto had a guide. He actually goes against Calypto's whole thing over here, Calypto tinfoil, and does all his stuff. It actually increases latency. So, yeah, be careful what you apply and what you do. But at the end of the day, honestly, just go through this chart and you can see there's so many things that are covered here. And I just recommend, honestly, I recommend just like stripping Windows and stripping your NVIDIA drivers and just getting better hardware. And obviously, if you don't want to strip your Windows, just CPU overclock, GPU overclock, RAM timings. That's it. Or XMP mode. This the game like the game's gonna be like the only way to get better at the game, play the game, aim train, and just have good reaction time. It's just <laughs> who knows if it's genetics or obviously you can train to get better, but you're only gonna get better in those small milliseconds. Yeah, they matter, but when you're playing at the highest levels, that's when they actually matter. If you're playing on a lower level and you just can't work your way up, there's people that play on sixty hertz on laptops that are literally an immortal. And like I don't know, maybe may radiant, but there's people that have shit systems that are just they're just very talented and very good at the game, and they play and they're fine. They play with high latency. They're just very good at the game. It really, just comes down to get better at the game that you're playing, and once you are, once you think you've hit a ceiling, yeah, then a lot of these things will help, especially getting a better like 360 hertz monitor, or more. Pushing more FPS, yes. But at the end of the day, it just comes down to getting better at the game that you're actually playing. That's it for my video. Thank, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, obviously just put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them to the best of my ability.